Hey everybody, looks like we are live. Great to see everybody. Happy Wednesday. So glad that you all could make it. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hang out with me, talk about art, go over technique together. So I'm very excited for part three of Painting the Emotional Portrait. So let's see who we have today. So we have... We have Roy all the way from New Jersey. How are you, sir? We have Colette from Wisconsin, Color Graphics. Uh, up, oh, that's Roy again from Jersey. And we have Honey from Long Island, New York. And we have Dave from Oklahoma. So we got you right, finally, sir. And let's see, we have Patty from Illinois. And let's see what a great group so far. Thank you so much for coming out. And uh, so it's so cool that I remembered Oklahoma, right? So uh, kudos for me. Let me get my glasses on. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit. When we were doing Paola Ray, I started doing a technique where I actually came back in with the Drew Blair's 50-50 illustration white by by Createx. Createx has been impressing me lately. Uh, they, some really good things I have to say about Createx. And with companies, I don't glaze anything over. I don't kiss any butt. If I don't believe in the product, if they're not doing something great, I don't talk about it. But I have these bottles of Createx here from 2011 and I haven't used them and I actually went ahead and used them the other day and they are perfect. I don't think any uh, any acrylic company can come close to what Createx did here. Like I said, I don't have any, any kind of working relationship with this company, but what a home run, you know? I mean, honestly, I would say that Createx probably has the long, longest living, uh, lasting shelf life than any acrylic out there. Hey Mike, how are you? Thank you so much for the super chat. So glad you're here. So Mike is from, from uh, Southern California, or is it Central California? Kind of like right in the middle, right Mike? I'm um, so glad you're here, thank you. And so, yeah, Createx is doing great things. So, kudos to them. So, if you hear me say kudos to anyone, you know that I was thoroughly impressed, you know. And, oh, yes, Central, very cool. Ah, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Mike's the best. So, I'm really happy he's here, definitely. And... Honey says it's really, uh, it's really, it's a really great painting. Chris just painted a helmet with 20 year old. Pa oh, really great paint. Yes. Chris just painted a helmet 20 year old re paint recently. You know what? I have to say, you know, Colette, uh, I tell Colette, I tell Roy, I tell everyone uh, from my students when I see something good in a paint. And I have to say that, you know, I have to say that Createx really, really hit a home run here. So thank you, Createx, for creating a really good product that lasts almost 10 years, uh, over 10 years. So I am going to pull up my Omni 4000, and I'm going to come in with the Drew Blair 5050 Illustration White. And we are going to go ahead and spray some more highlights, right? It's not, this is just a new technique I started. And let me get, oh, let me go ahead and get this airbrush fired up. And I'm going to put some of my white mixture here. See, get that nice and shaken up. Hey, Mr. Roy, all the way from Massachusetts. How are you? Haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're well, my friend. Always a pleasure 
Mr. Willie has been with me from the very beginning, back when we were kids. <laughs> This one doesn't feel right. Let's see, let me go with this bottle here. If it doesn't feel right, don't spray it, you know, whether it's your airbrush or whatever. If it doesn't feel right, it doesn't, it doesn't go on your artwork. Let's see. Put a little bit of this white mixture in here. I dilute Drew Blair's 50-50 Illustration White. Uh, 50% water, 50%, uh, let me get a rag, 50% water and 50% paint, and it's nice and thin, and I get a nice transparent feel. So that's what I'm after. Get this paint off my hand. Okay, and let's see. There we go, got the paint off. Now, you never want to spray like a cowboy, right? You always want to do a test, fix your Mac valve. And what I'm going to do is find some test paper. I know it's around here somewhere. Let's see. You always want to have a test paper that is the same as the paper you're using, right? So I'm just going to come here. Nice spray, everything's working good. Okay, so as you can see in my reference here, I have to go ahead and uh, probably reinforce some of the white areas. And what better way to do it than this way right here. And it's going to Lessen the need for the white pastel. We might use just a little bit of white pastel, but just lessen the need for that. There's a blast of light right on the upper lateral cartilage right there on her nose. So that's what I want to do. I want to hit that. And right here to the glabellum. Glabella. Tomato, tomato, right? And let's see. And okay, so you see I went ahead and uh, kind of came in a little stronger on the lights on her nose here. And this is her alar cartilage right here. See, we want her nose to come forward, right? That's important. So that's why we're doing this, is to bring bring it forward, her nose. Right here, her, her malar uh, fat compartment here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit this light a little bit here, bring this forward. Now, if the light gets a little strong, you can just increase your distance and everything will get much more subtle, right? So that's what you want to do. Increase the distance. So there's something called the uh, inverse square law that, that works for, that actually applies to airbrushing. And just bring that down just a little bit, just like so. There we go. So we're actually accentuating the lights right now. Oh, got a new job. That's great. Getting up early, that's great. <laughs> Not so great, right, sir? And let's see, right here. There we go. So now we're actually uh, getting, so there's a light fall off. So if you see how the light is stronger on her nose and on her malar fat compartments, and uh, let me see, make sure I got that correct. Uh, 
Yep, malefact compartments, got it right. Okay, so, but as you go further down the face, the light gets less and less intense, and that's why it's actually, there's a light here, but it's much weaker down here than on the upper part of the face, and you wouldn't think that there is much of a difference in the uh, energy of the in the energy of the light in such a short distance but it really does it really is a difference so i am going to use this because i want to protect my shadow and her lips and right here i'm just going to bring this down so right here you have this muscle right there's a muscle that comes down right here and i'll talk about it i think it's the the uh anguli depressor let me see if i get that right so we have it over here let's see is this it no this is it right here let's see if we can bring it up okay yes so right along here let me make this smaller Right along here is a muscle called the angle, the depressa anguli oris, and that's pulling down, sort of like the frown muscle, and so that's why we're actually hitting that light because that's actually sticking out a little bit, and that's why we see that little bit of light on both sides. So that's very important. So let me go ahead and turn that off, and let's continue that. Bring that over. And then we're seeing just a little bit of the mental fat compartment right here. And then ever so lightly right here is your depressor anguli, right? So that's that's important. Let me see what that name is again. That would drive me crazy. Let's see. That is the depressor labii. Nope, that is the ang depressor anguli oris. Right there, the depressor anguli oris. And that's what's causing this light right, right over here. So uh, it would drive me crazy if I, if I said it and didn't get it right. Okay, good. So we'll just continue that. Now, right here is very interesting. Right along here is something called the uh, nasal labial fold. As we get older, it gets more intense and more pronounced, more superficial. But she has it just ever so slightly. But we can go ahead and just uh, paint what's right next to it. And you see what's right next to it is the orbicularis oris. And well, as you see that, you just see it ever so lightly. So a lot of times the adjacent shape will describe the shape more so than the shape itself. And this is a prime example. Uh, Jeff Simon, how are you? Great to see you. Jeff, could you remind me where you're from? I believe this is the second or third time you're here. So it does take a few times, Jeff. I'm so glad you're here again. So thank you. Welcome back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these right here, which is the uh, uh, superior. Uh, let me double check here so I get that right. Let's see. So we'll go to the skull. We'll move this up. Okay, so right here is the, uh, this right here is the orbital superioris, I believe it is, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. Let me get that information because I don't want to be sending people down the Primrose path. So I am going to come here. I'm going to go to my anatomy and let's see. I, I have to be telling you all the truth, right? Let's see. So that is the, you know what's really weird? 
when you are looking at anatomy, uh, anatomy books and everything, a lot of times they have different names for different, uh, you know, for different names for the same anatomical thing. So let me continue here. Just bear with me. Uh, it's worth it that I get it right. So let's see if I could uh, find that right here. Oh boy. So, all right. Anyway, that's just something that really just, it's the eminence, but I'm not sure what eminence it is. But anyway, so it's this bone right here. So I want to go ahead and hit that because that part is coming out, right? That part is coming forward and is facing the light more directly. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide this. And let's hide that and let's go ahead and paint that. But the thing is, I don't paint anything unless I see it in the reference. What I can do is I know anatomy and I'll look for that anatomical form. But if it doesn't match what's in the reference, I don't put it in. So that's really important. So in the old days or just recently, I wouldn't have gone in again since the very first week with the uh with the white mixture but now i'm realizing that the second pass really helps to describe a lot so it's really great so and since i'm still going light i don't have that worry of blue shift which is really good so so jeff says long island new york oh i went to school out in long island I went to uh, Southampton College, which was part of Long Island University back then, and I studied art history, which was really, really instrumental in my growth as a painter. I had an amazing professor, Professor Skinner, and he was just incredibly inspiring. And uh, so I just thank him. I thank so many of my teachers uh, for who I am as an artist and a person. So that's really cool. Okay, so you see I'm working on this now. And while we're here, let's go ahead and put some more light on, on the hair, right? Let's accentuate her blonde hair, her beautiful blonde hair. Let's make this happen. See that? Now I'm actually uh, sculpting with light. And that's what you want to do. And there's this beautiful shaft of light right here. Right here in the hair. Look at that. Just pow. Really strong. John Diekman, how are you? Great to see you. All the way from Wisconsin. I hear you're getting snow tomorrow. So be prepared, my friend. Make sure you don't shovel. Have some young kid do it. Uh, that's what I would do and right here I'm just going to come in with the blast of light here in her blonde hair so opportunity to add the white which is really important but I won't get involved in highlights because there you can get into big trouble so you know with uh, stuff like blue shift and stuff so you want to be very weary of that so I'm also going to come in and get some of the beautiful white of her fingers here because they are quite white see that and then not so much here but as we come right here there's a blast of light on her fingers right here and then right here as well so it gives me the ability to go ahead and get a head start so to speak Make sure you don't want underspray, so you're going to put the uh, magnet strategically there so you don't have to deal with that, especially with the white mixture. Underspray would really ruin your day. Great airbrush, the Omni 4000, highly recommend it. It's from Badger. You can get it at usaairbrushsupply.com. Uh, if you do get it, use the code TIMOTHYPSA for 15% off. Really wonderful. OK, 
Okay, and Jeff says, Tim, where do you, uh, when do you add the white paint and when do you erase for highlights? So with this, I don't really erase too much for highlights. I usually set up for highlights. So what I'm going to do is I come in with the white past of the, uh, in the very beginning, I start with the line drawing and then I use the 50-50 uh, illustration white and spray in the lights and then come in with the detail mixture of the India ink and just slowly build up. As I get to the point where I'm ready to go to the next darkest layer, at that point I will uh, come back with the 50-50 illustration white, reinforce those lights, and then continue to paint. When I do use an eraser, it's more to set up for the white pastel at the very end. So it's a very pragmatic way of, of painting, uh, Jeff, so uh, it's really pretty cool. And uh, so that's cool. Great question, sir. So I do have something here, uh, which is really interesting. Dr. Tim, <laughs> I do have something here. Uh, if I hit paste, if just check out the link. And I have an online course that comes with the stencils, the, uh, the, ink, the ink mixtures, and... Uh, and even the line drawing for you to try this technique, Jeff. If Check it out. It might be something that you would like. People are loving it. They're learning a lot, and that makes me happy. So check that out if you can. So white pastel is just basically a white pastel pencil that I'll use at the very end to really knock out those really vivid highlights, which is great. The reason is because there's no worries of any kind of blue shift when we're doing that. And that really, really, really just is like the icing and the cherry on the cake. It really is wonderful. So right here you can see I'm just getting this highlight right there. And right over here. I bet you're wondering where I got the duck. Uh, but that is the... The shield's going, the air going underneath, so that's pretty funny. So, uh, one of my students who took the online course, he did a great job, Ken Cleveland from Indianapolis. And uh, so he was asking how to do blonde hair. So when he sees this video, it's really going to help him. So when you do take my online course, I'm there for you guys, meaning that if you have any questions during the way, I'm always there. If there's any kind of issues, I give you amazing customer service because you deserve it. That's why, you know. So, okay, so we are done with the 50-50 with the, uh, illustration white. Now, one of the things I see is that a lot of people... They have issues with not cleaning the airbrush right away. And, you know, I understand life's busy, you get tired and all that stuff, but please, especially if you have acrylic, India ink, you can get away with it. But if you have acrylic, you definitely want, in your airbrush, you definitely want to clean it right away. So here are the reasons if that dries in the uh, in the needle shaft going to your nozzle and in your nozzle, it won't work correctly. Your airbrush won't be as good. You won't get the exact detail. And there's just so many different things. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So uh, Jeff says he can't use inks or pastels for most of my work as it needs to be light fast, automotive grade, and be able to be cleared with 2k well the thing is my inks are 100% light fast they uh, they're archival and they will look as good as the day you painted them 400 years from now because uh, India ink is one of the more uh, traditional ancient mediums out there and uh, it's basically just you know, carbon, 
and water with a little bit of shellac. Now you can go ahead and clear coat that, no problem, uh, but it's not for automotive. So yeah, this is more for, uh, this stuff is more for working on illustration board or paper or wood with gesso, but definitely not, I agree. But if you're doing portraits, you have a portrait commission, uh, this is a great medium. Plus, you could use the India ink as an underpainting and go over it with color. So the India ink, if you just use it with Drew Blair's 5050 Illustration White and not White Pastel, you'll have no worries, no problems uh, uh, clear coating it. But yes, if you are using, uh, if you are going to go ahead and... Uh, use pastel then you definitely can't clear coat Dwayne thank you so much my friend thank you Dwayne for the super chat sticker I really appreciate it sir that is uh, so encouraging you guys just don't know how encouraging and how important it is to get the support and appreciation from you guys be guys and girls because I appreciate is really so much so thank you so much. So thank you so far for Mintaholic. And thank you so much for Dwayne for the super chats and the support. You guys are amazing. So Mike says, I've ruined my brush this way. Automotive paint is very unforgiving. Yes. So you see, Mike, you know, always clean it right away. I know it's, it's a hassle, you know, to stop your, your work and stopping my live stream actually. To wash it out but there's no greater feeling Mike right when you go to work uh, you go to work with your airbrush and it's just humming like the day you bought it or even better and that's basically you know the gist of it now what I like to do and I'll show you a good technique you want to get these q-tips from from CVS and because they don't, they're not very hairy. So you just dip a little water in there and then you, you just make sure you just go in there and get any kind of residual paint or anything that's in there. But you don't want to rub it in there and lose the, lose the cotton fibers. So just a little bit like that. And that's all you need to do. And then once that is done, you give it a little bit of water. And now your airbrush you can put it away and have peace of mind you don't have to remember to clean it and i'm just going to put the needle back in just like so let's see there we go and what i like to do is make sure that the needle is all the way forward when i put it back together put a little bit of water in there and just test it out make sure no water is coming out uh, before you pull back, spray, spray that last bit of water through there, get your cap, and then just wipe your cap really clean. So I keep my airbrush clean inside and out. And you know what? 99.99% my airbrush is working without any flaws as the day I purchased them. So... That is very, very important. So I'm just going to put this aside and put it away. And that's the advantage. You know, you get to put your airbrush away and not have to deal with it or worry about it. So I'm going to put this water over here. And let's see what questions I had. Oh, Dwayne, how you doing? Great to see you. Oh, uh, no, Dwayne, you're here. So Dwayne says, just coming in from the studio late day. So... So I just want to say thanks again to Dwayne. Um, so Dwayne says you are in the studio. What projects are you working on, Dwayne? And Mr. Rick Lotta and Mr. Brad, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys are great. Uh, now, and you know what's cool? Brad and Rick, they are both from Canada. And of course, Dwayne is from California, right? Central California, is that correct, sir? Do I got that right? Oh, Jeff says carburetor cleaner works great to clean the airbrush. Yes, that's if we leave them there, right? But if you clean them right, water is more than enough. 
Uh, even with acrylic, as long as you clean it immediately after use, that's all you need. That's all I ever used, uh, which is really great. So now I have my detail mixture in my airbrush, and now I'm just going to go ahead and just start, you know, remember, just like a relief pitcher, when they come into the game, they throw some, some practice pitches. Even though I'm going to be going into my straight detail mixture, right now I'm working with the detail mixture half and half with water, but I'm just going to go ahead and just paint a little bit and just get acclimated and get warmed up you don't want to get warmed up with dark ink you want to get warmed up with the detail mixture that is diluted right that's so important there we go and so yeah and in the early days when i first started oh my god back in 2009 i would go to work because i had a full-time job back then and I would forget about it. And <laughs> and then I'd be like at work, like, oh my God, I didn't clean my airbrush when I came back. It was like really rock hard. And well, not rock hard, but it was a mess. And that was very difficult to clean it. And I was using acrylics before I was using the inks, right? And so, Okay, so now you can see I'm coming in with that detail mixture, just getting reacclimated to everything. Now, right here, it's kind of an interesting area because it's, uh, it's the eye socket area. And the way it looks like, if I really look at it, that it gets darker right here at the edge and then gets lighter inside right up into where the fold of the eyelid is right so you see how it gets a lighter area wow oh my god wow holy cow we have to stop <laughs> the action here mr dave just gave a super chat for 49 dollars and 99 cents that is so amazing wow that is just incredible thank you so much dave from the bottom of my heart that is just so amazing you are incredible uh what a great great lift that is for me for the channel uh i am like greatly greatly encouraged you just don't know uh, a lot of times things like this happen at the right perfect uh, timing so thank you so much Dave I really 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 appreciate it and uh, so Mike says he has to go uh, uh, has to charge the phone thanks for hanging out Mike you're amazing I hope to see you soon and talk to you soon so take care of yourself Mr. Steve Leahy how are you sir great to see you hope everything is going well and so isn't that incredible that uh that uh dave gave such a wonderful amazing super chat uh super sticker that is uh, just incredible and let's see incredibly generous and Dwayne says he's been working on a motorcycle tank just finished the prep work and art all ready to start spraying tomorrow oh wow that's very cool oh no you're very welcome it's my honor dave and so that is a record breaker, Brad, definitely with Dave, uh, amazing, super, super sticker, uh, just incredible, super generous, yes, so thank you, thank you. So now we're going to continue with our detail mixture, 50-50 illustration white, and no, 50-50 with the detail mixture in water. And you see how, which is very interesting, we'll zoom in. These are the little things that you start seeing when you do these over and over again, when you're doing portraits as long as I have. And you start seeing these like really subtle differences. So you see how it's darker right here and then gets lighter right up to where the fold 
of the eye leper eyelid is and that's wow mr bread thank you so much 20 dollar super chat sticker that is so amazing thank you sir thank you for the encouragement thank you for believing in the channel and thank you for you know coming to the channel and supporting i just really appreciate everybody and brad from the bottom of my heart i am greatly encouraged so that means a lot the world to me so thank you so much you guys are just out of this world you know what an encouraging day thank you you know it's nice you know when sometimes you might have a rough patch but then you know you always have these moments where you feel appreciation and that really just changes things and thank you thank you for that everybody So that is just amazing. So how incredible are you guys all? So you see, I went ahead and reinforced the fold of the upper eyelid and then this area, which is basically infused by a reflected light coming off of the, uh, it's really interesting. So it's uh, this area right here underneath the eyebrow is actually infused with reflected light bouncing off of the malafat compartment going right up there and that's what's causing it so it's like yes we're we're thinking we're painting we're painting what we see but we're also really looking really uh breaking things down you know so this is just amazing so thank you everybody this is just so great and um uh, but yeah, one of the things I really stress is anatomy, you know, because it's going to pay dividends. Trust me, the more you learn about anatomy, your work is just going to, oh, Mr. Steve, uh, Mr. Uh, Willie has to go. I know you got work in the morning. I hope you have a great night and, uh, and congratulations on your new job, sir. And look forward to seeing you next week if you can make it. Uh, if you have any questions about airbrush or anything, always feel free to ask me, Willie. And so thank you so much for stopping by. Like I said, Willie's been with me from the very beginning, from the early days. Not as early as when dinosaurs roamed, but pretty early nonetheless. <laughs> so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and the lower eyelid which basically in some people who don't have deep set eyes uh, you can see how the roundness of her eyeball kind of comes forward and that's what we're doing so this is basically her eyeball right here so this is coming here just like so and then we are oh perfect so willie's going to be here next week and that makes me happy thank you sir looking forward to it have an amazing weekend sir yeah uh i used to do live streams and there was like nobody there and willie would come by and i think wendy would stop by back then those were the ones who were in the very very beginning and I remember one Christmas, I think it was just like Willie and Wendy. That's all it was. One year, Wednesday. And it was always on Wednesday at 930, which is funny, you know. Patty, have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. A lot of people have to get up early in the morning, and I understand that, right? Um, the funny thing is, now that I work for myself, I would think I would take it easy and now I work from like 8 30 in the morning until like one o'clock in the morning so you know I think I would be able to take it easy but working for yourself is even crazier that I found and so uh, but very cool to see you Patty very very cool and you see I'm just going to erase a little bit because right here is the uh, Retro Abicularis Oculi fat, which is a fat compartment, which is, 
between the eyebrow and the upper eyelid but on the outside and it pretty much stops when you get into the inner part of the eye socket there but it's always there so looking for it is always good and you see how when we know anatomy and we really get in there like plastic surgeons like really get into what's happening like a plastic surgeon like when a plastic surgeon is doing like Botox injections or they're doing filler in areas they have to know the anatomy so well that because if they go too deep with the injection they can hit nerves where the person is never going to taste food again so they really have to know the anatomy now this anatomy that you get with plastic surgeons, you won't get in anatomy books. You know why? Because anatomy books are ancient. However, the plastic surgery field is only 100 years old. So, of course, the anatomy books are not going to know about the uh, nasolabial fold. Or they're not going to know about the malar fat compartment or the super... Uh, what is the other one, which is the uh, uh, the retroopicularis oculi fat compartment. They won't know about it because it's only been around 100 years. And that's cool. So that's exciting. So that's one of the things that I find that even if you're doing like, uh, you know, like skulls that are pretty much fantasy, and those are cool, you know. But a little bit of that uh, anatomy is going to make that skull look like out of this world. Just a little bit. So I highly recommend it. And uh, so I'll be doing an online course about that pretty soon. Uh, anatomy for painters, uh, for airbrush artists, for everybody, right? So right here, I didn't go in. So it's time to erase, right? So what's the best eraser? I find, believe it or not, a kneaded eraser actually will rip up the paper a lot sooner than, let's say, uh, a mono like this one. So this one, I can just really concentrate on that pencil line and kind of, you know, be real surgical as to getting rid of the pencil line. Remember, pencil lines are training wheels and we will use them when we need them and when we don't need them we can get rid of them like the like the um training wheels on a bike right and so rick says uh is your sotar 2020 you're using uh i do have uh no this is uh funny you should ask rick this is my customized extreme patriot arrow and this is my flagship uh airbrush and I actually sell these on my website. And so I took an amazing airbrush, which is the Badger Extreme Patriot Arrow, but customized it to actually make it a turbo. I mean, actually make it to the point where it's getting detail that rivals, if not is as good, I would say, I would venture to say that, and I have been a Micron user, that this is not a slouch and not second to the Micron. What's really wonderful is that it's a 0 0.30. So you might say, how is a 0 0.30 airbrush equal to the Micron? The secret, my friend, is in the nozzle and the needle. And I manipulated that to actually work on the aerodynamics. And as the air and the ink leave the airbrush or the paint, it's a much finer cone, and that's where the detail comes from. It's the size of the cone, not the needle and nozzle, which is going to give you that detail. So remember that. Also, it's the size of the cone that you can get with the air pressure. So all those different things kind of work together, and that's why I kind of came up with my own version of the Extreme Patriot Arrow. So you notice I almost use this exclusively, except for the white mixture, which I use the Omni. Uh, I also love the Vega too. That's a beautiful airbrush. So you see here, I went ahead and I erased that pencil line. So now I want to reinforce that. But I don't want to go crazy because you have to look at your values. Before I do that, is there any pencil lines I could get rid of? And you never want to erase on, 
on wet paper. Wet paper is like the kiss of death. If you erase on wet paper, it's like erasing on a wet paper towel. That's going to tear and just really just mess up something awful. So definitely don't want to do that. So, you know, the best defense is, is not be there. So make sure you always plan and make sure you don't do anything unless you go ahead and let the paper dry. So right now, I'm just going to perpendicular, not parallel. So I'm still with the detail mixture, mix 50-50 with the illustration white. I'm uh, sorry, 50-50 with water. Um, I don't know why I said that three times. But doing that, it's even lighter and allows you to go ahead and paint without commitment just yet. So if you, you it kind of forces you to uh, go light because light is always right, too dark, too soon, too bad, too sad. And so you want to make sure that you're always uh, on the light side. Right here is nice. We have a kind of a hard edge where the light uh, hair in front goes over the dark hair, perpendicular and not parallel. And now I created this beautiful hard edge here that's going to stay for the whole painting. So that's really great. And Rick says he's bought the brush already. Love it. Just wondering if you use the Sotar. I do. I do use the Sotar. Uh, Steve Leahy says he needs to jump out for the night. Tim looking great as usual. Steve, have a great night. Always a pleasure, my friend. And uh, love the work you're doing. That, that uh, landscape with the trees in the sky was just amazing. Uh, check out Steve on his YouTube channel. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to show you the Sotar that I do have. And I love this. This is the Sotar 2020 Slim. This airbrush just kicks butt. What I really love about it is when you're working with it, it kind of feels like you're working with a mechanical pen. Uh, it's great. When I'm not worried about tight detail, uh, of course, tight detail, I'm going to be wearing, using my Extreme Patriot Arrow. But if I'm not worried about tight detail, this is just a fun airbrush to use. I would never use it without a pack, Mac valve. You really can't because you need to regulate that air pressure. Uh, just an amazing airbrush. Just my second favorite badger out there. Really incredible. So you see, it just looks like a mechanical pen. You got to worry about this though because you only get like maybe two or three drops of uh, ink or paint in there. So you want to, you know, make sure that you don't go too far like this. You don't have a cap. So those are a couple of caveats. But if I was going to give this uh, a zero to... 10 stars, I would give it a 9 star rating, definitely, a 9 out of 10, and, oh, cool, so Honey says she is listening more than chatting, trying to finish a drawing, very cool, love your drawing, uh, so that is very cool, great questions today, and uh, so that's really cool, so, <laughs> so Mike says, don't analyze it, just send him money and be happy. <laughs> well, anyone sends me money, I'll be happy. That's definitely Dwayne. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you guys are all hilarious. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just continue uh, working on some dark accents. Because right now in this first kind of half hour or so, I'm really just getting reacclimated you know, uh, for tonight, you know, because I haven't been airbrushing all day. So, you know, having the training that I have, you know, in art, so I'm pretty well versed in airbrush, pastel, oil painting, uh, you know, graphite, pen and ink, watercolor. So I'm very lucky for that. And some people have asked, you know, how can you go in the same day from oil painting to airbrush to pastel? And I have been doing that. And because I teach those uh, particular uh, mediums and also have personal projects. 
And the thing is, what really is, is that every medium is the same. You're solving the same problems. And when you're solving the same problems, you just got to get a handle of the medium, right? But you want to always bend that medium into your yours into submission right you want that medium to do what you want so my goal whether it's airbrush or or oils or acrylic or anything i always want to have the same look because that's my look and you don't want to have a totally different look when you're working on one medium to another so that's very important consideration uh Oh, Rick says he would love to see my work, uh, see you work your magic airbrush and color portrait. That is definitely in the future. On this channel, throwing down the gauntlet, you guys are going to see an airbrush and color uh, in the near future. So that's pretty exciting. But, so you're saying, but Tim, you're doing the ink, you're going against it. No, because I'm first going to do an India ink underpainting and show you all how you can go ahead and uh, use this as a perfect underpainting to go over with Createx paint. So hopefully we'll get Createx to sponsor the uh, live stream. That would be great. And so looking forward to that. And so I think that would be a pretty cool thing. Yeah, starting about last year, about this time, I started working in color again. I stopped working in color for a long time because I wanted to really get control of the airbrush and get my values to the point where I feel my values rival anyone's and my black and white. And because I believe in what Angra said is that a good painting is 85% drawing. And by drawing, he means just black and white. And so by doing that, I believe that my paintings have much more solidity if I didn't take those years just to worry about black and white only. So it's a little avant-garde what I did. I don't recommend it because you're taking years to uh, really perfect black and white, but it allows me to see values in color much more succinctly. And so it's very exciting. So right now I'm just darkening this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty out my airbrush and I'm going to put straight detail mixture. It's just a very uh, slight uh, degree of uh, going darker because right now before it was uh, diluted 50% uh, with water. Now I'm just going to put eight hours, eight hours, eight, <laughs> eight hours. I'm going to put uh, eight drops of detail mixture in here and now we're gonna pretty much go down the center line I'm gonna test it out make sure everything's working and now when I go into her pupils we'll see that things start getting much darker and so very cool yes it's gonna be very exciting and so I'm looking forward to that and it's gonna be on gesso uh, wood on with gesso and marble dust and we're really going to explore color so that's going to be a lot of fun I'm not sure we may use acrylic I'm still on the fence a little bit I might want to go with golden we'll see If uh, Createx wanted to sponsor, then I would definitely, definitely go with Createx. There we go. So you see how we can, uh, see how now we have the straight detail mix and things are getting a little more intense when we go ahead and put those darks look how those eyes start to pop a little bit more which is really cool and so we are at the 10 30 mark so thank you so much for staying the first hour one hour to go and i think we're going to make really great progress today
So you see how we're really getting into the crease of her eye. And let's do the crease of her eye here as well. So I'm pumping that trigger and doing little dagger strokes. And then we're just coming right here. So I want this very light, this shadow on her eyeball. And so I'm just going to increase my distance and let the airbrush do the hard work. Don't you try and get that gradation. Just increase the distance of your airbrush and it will gladly give you the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, gradations. You just sit back and let the airbrush do the hard work. Mastering the airbrush is an artistic thing, but it's also a mechanical thing. And it's great, you know. Uh, the airbrush, when you really know how to use it, is your friend, definitely. So now her face is kind of popping a little bit. Let's use this detail mixture and do her nostrils. Cute little nostrils here, adorable. There we go. We can intensify a little bit the underplane of the alar cartilage here. Just concentrate. One second rule, look for a second, paint for a second, right? Look for a second, paint for a second. Just a great group today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, uh, this evening. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. It's just amazing. There we go. So now, remember we came in with the uh, white mixture and that really set things up, right? Set the tone. And now when we come in, we could really come in with this straight detail mixture and really beautifully darken up now when you're looking at the eyelashes especially the lower eyelashes don't worry about doing them too soon wait for that to happen because you have to basically make the lower eyelash eye, lower eyelids turn so doing the eyelashes early they're just going to get in the way so don't do double the work you let that go until you need to Dwayne says, I'm more of a Createx illustration fan over Golden High Flow. I can work illustration more with erasing, yes. And that's the great thing about Createx is that they really have, uh, have formulated something that is much, probably the best for airbrush, I would say. Uh, out of everything, I think I have to say that Createx is probably the best paint for airbrush. And they cater to airbrush artists, right? Whether it's automotive or, you know, illustration with the illustration line and the Tim Gore line. I mean, yeah, hats off to them. They're doing great. Thank God for them, right? Airbrush artists, you know, a lot of these uh, fine art companies, they don't really give uh, artists who work in airbrush, they don't give us the uh, respect and giving us what we need. So definitely that's where Createx is really doing a great job. They're listening to uh, airbrush artists and they're really trying to solve the problems such as erasing and uh, having it dry quickly and stuff like that. So definitely. See how the upper lip kind of folds on top of the lower lip there and then you have this little bit of shadow and uh, so we're just going to continue going down this center line of her body of her head we're not painting her body and then i'm just going to slowly darken this
So it's nice with the detail mixture straight, it's slightly darker than the detail mixture that was diluted. And now we could continue with, with texture and just go slightly darker. Now if I went straight in with the medium mixture and just went dark like a cowboy, then I wouldn't be able to build up texture, right? So now I'm doing little circular motions, pumping that trigger, and I'm working on texture, as well as slightly darkening her tongue. Now, where it's smooth, I'm just going to uh, pump that trigger, but I'm not going to put texture because it's smooth. But where there's textural areas in her tongue, I'm going to pump that trigger, and I'm going to spray with a space in between, right? So, so you're not just spraying the dark, and you're also achieving texture at the same time. And, and that's what we're doing. So I like working with Createx as well because the India inks is a great underpainting for Createx paints. Really works well. It's like a great marriage of my Airbrush India inks. So why would you use the Airbrush India inks as opposed to just going in with black and white Createx? Which would be fine, but one of the great things of the advantages of my Airbrush India inks is that the pencil lines never get trapped underneath. So no matter how much airbrush in the ink I put on top, it seems like the pencil lines go above the ink and it's easily erasable. So that's really cool. So I don't know any of you guys or girls have painted and were unable to get rid of the pencil lines and you're just like, ugh, hopefully the client doesn't say anything about that. But that's happened to me, happened to all of us. But with the Airbrush India inks, you don't have that trouble, you know? Oh, so Dwayne says, uh, Golden High Flow Spray is incredible, but it's just hard, uh, a hard finish. It is. You don't have much erasability with the Golden Line. Uh, you know what I like using, which is fascinating? I'll dilute with the Airbrush Medium the uh, Fluid Acrylics by Golden. You have much more of a traditional palette, and... Uh, so that's pretty cool. So I do that to get more of like colors like raw umber and Naples yellow and, you know, Van Dyke brown. So I'll use that when I'm using golden. That's really the rain, main reason why I'll use golden so I can get those traditional colors. Uh, golden high flow and not golden high flow, but golden uh, fluid acrylics because they have like 100, 200 of them. And you have so many colors under the sun, which is cool. But you're pretty much hacking into that because the fluid acrylics are not geared for airbrush artists. So you have to manipulate them to have them work for us, right? So definitely understand your point, uh, uh, Mr. Dwayne, is, you know, why Createx for, for airbrush artists seems to be the much better choice much more convenient and much more solving the problems that we deal with on a day-to-day. -day. Especially yourself being a custom airbrush artist, right? Uh, that's uh, very true. Uh, oh, many, many times. Yeah, you know, those pencil lines, those darn pencil lines. Um, uh, so, you know, that's rough. And But that happens to the best of us, right? Uh, even like some of my oil paints, uh, oil paintings I have a pencil line and I paint it over it and I'm like oh you really can't get rid of it but with oils what I'll do is I'll just put much thicker oil on top but still it's you know we all face those issues it's uh, part of being an artist some clients they like to see the you know the method that we're using but some don't want any kind of any kind of uh, clue that it was done by hand. So you see how we're creating the texture of her tongue really slow? Super slow, right? Really, just really, really slow. Now I'm going to use my freehand shield and I'm going to do the shadow underneath her, her lower lip. It's 
part shadow, part obicularis oris, which is like a rubber band kind of muscle going around the mouth. Uh-oh. Thank God that was just a shaving of a uh, of the eraser. I got scared. And so always wipe your freehand shield when you take it off and put it back on. You don't want to reposition ink or paint, depending on what you're doing. And you see, this is the... So right here is what is called the mental fat, which is a fat compartment that sits on the mental protuberance, which is basically the chin. And so it's round like a golf ball shape, but then you always see a line right here. And that line is interrupting that uh, fat compartment with that kind of tight rubber band muscle called the obicularis oris. So always look out for that. And you can always see it. It's there almost all the time. So the great thing about anatomy is that you can kind of look out for it. You know, like when you're playing that game Punch Buggy, when you're looking out for Volkswagens and you see it, that sort of thing. So Dwayne says he's done that when he needed a certain color. That was when it was hard to mix. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, it, it is. It's exactly it's very difficult to mix uh, right so like certain colors are very difficult to kind of uh, get you know so that's why you know maybe a golden would be great if you need a certain color that is not readily available and kind of more difficult to mix right so that's where uh, you know using something like the golden line if you need a certain color. Now I never mixed golden and uh, and Createx. Have you mixed them yet, sir? Uh, Dwayne, did you have any kind of issue when you did that? Or is that too scary? <laughs> I'm a little scared to do that, especially if it's a commission, right? So that's something to worry about. Increasing my distance, as you can see and right here now one of the things i want to talk about i think i talked about it last week is compressing your values making sure you don't make things too contrasty because that's what we want to do we want to really accentuate what we're doing because what we pay attention to we see it much more clearly and we'll create too much contrast so like right here you want to make sure that we don't have too much contrast. So I'm lowering the contrast of this muscle right here and also lowering the contrast of this uh, mental protuber, the mental fat compartment as it moves over to the side, uh, side of the chin there. Okay. Now I am uh, tempted to erase, but I know it's still wet, so I'm going to suppress my temptation. I'm going to work on the filtrum a little bit. Now, one thing about the filtrum is that the filtrum goes from the corners, the top corners of the upper lip, and moves right to this area right here is the uh, septum right there. See, now it's like I'm turning it. It has to turn towards the center of her nose, right? And then it radiates out to these points uh, on the upper lip. Very important. There we go. And see how it's darker here towards the side? Those are things that we start doing right now with the detail mixture straight. So now what we'll do is we, oh, let's work on the eye, eyebrows a little bit because now we have a little darker color here. And so we want to be pretty close and we want to watch out for any kind of spidering, right? And we're going to hit some of these darker eye, eye eyelashes and 
Little baby dagger strokes, pumping that trigger. And lower that air pressure just a tiny bit with the pack valve. Or if you have a Mac valve, it'll really come in handy. And so that's basically what you want to do. And also, oh, Dwayne says he hasn't mixed them together as in a bottle, but they work fine in conjunction. Wow, okay. So that is very encouraging. So I have a painting that I've been working on for years, and it's solely with uh, Golden. But... I'm going to try adding some Createx because I can see how Createx paints would be great for certain passages to do the racing. So definitely that's great news. I appreciate that insight, Dwayne. Now you see her eyes are starting to pop out. But we want to make sure always that these values are compressed, right? We don't want too much of of a contrast if it's not there so again remember that the edge of where the eye socket is it's darker and then there's a whole bunch of reflected light from the eyebrow down to the fold of the upper eyelid There we go. So now, just by doing that, you can see how we're creating this uh, wonderful uh, depth over here in her eyes. Because her eyes are the star of the show. And her mouth being open and that, and that kind of really cool expression, like she just won the lottery. going to raise that pressure a little bit so since I'm here with the detail mixture I'm just going to show you guys that I'm going to kind of begin the texture of the eyes I think I was really blurry with the camera for a while there we go okay and I'll just move over here and now I'll just come in and I'll just start putting some of this eye texture and I'll erase later but I'm doing that one second rule right and I'm looking for the large shapes even in this iris I'm looking for the large shapes first Then we go in with the little shapes, right? One second rule. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Done is always better than perfect. So when you see detail like that, don't be afraid of it. Don't have an approach avoidance. Go right for it, right? So I heard David LaFell say, great portrait painter and uh, still life painter say, Start with the beginning and end with the end. And I thought that, no, start with the end and end with the beginning, which was really cool. So, you know, I guess he meant like there are times when you just want to go for some of these real detail, even though you're far away from the end, go ahead and start doing some of the end parts if that's what you so feel like doing. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want. And you want to have that spirit of, uh, of experimentation, right? That's what I like. I like that spirit of an experimentation. That's always fun. And so I'm seeing them doing the little details, but also doing some of those big shapes, right? And we have this beautiful edge here. So each time you go from the detail mixture, the diluted version, then the straight, then the light and the medium, 
you're playing a little more for keeps so in the beginning the detail mixture diluted is really very easy to work with but then when you go to let's say start working with the um, the light mixture the medium mixture you really have to be more careful because it's much darker but you've already built up those darks by that time so you're ready that's why too dark too early too bad see how we're kind of setting up the three-dimensionality of that eyelid hey orange five how you doing oh orange five likes that quote yeah mr david lafell's amazing uh just an incredible artist my friend uh uh yeah so the, such a whole lifetime of painting is just incredible how he talks about edges and stuff like that is really just out of this world and uh so Dwayne says he has mixed fw inks with illustration on the commissions wow that's cool so how did that go and also Dwayne says he used uh the golden underneath the illustration and then was able to scratch with ease that's cool so were you scratching to the illust uh were you scratching to the golden underneath or from the actual below the golden so that's really cool yeah sometimes it's okay to go ahead and just say you know what i'm just i just feel like you know doing some detail that's all that happens so you know when you've been working with the same airbrush for about you know five to eight hours a day every day you start to become an airbrush whisperer you just know when there's something just a little bit not working right you just hear it or feel it and that's what happens so I'm sure you all are like that perfect and raise that air pressure just a little bit and so we're gonna let that dry remember we're tempted always tempted to erase but you never want to erase on wet paper we always always have to uh, use discretion we're like PG 13 discretion is advised like I said you know you don't want to go too much in detail because right now you're working on large shapes and you're working on the lights and dark so if you go too much into detail you're just going to have to do it over again so you want to do some of the large shapes of the eyebrows the eyelashes and so on uh, that's always best but like I said if you feel like doing a little bit of detail so what right go for it so now we'll look and see how that looks now like always uh, I think that this eye appears a little bit darker and I'll just go ahead and darken this up right here that's why it's always important to work both eyes at the same time because then uh, you know like now I can adjust and make those eyes pretty close as far as value and everything But even though I want to make it as dark, it doesn't excuse me from not using the one second rule, right? So now you can see I'm darkening up this value. Now you can see that this eye is this iris is bigger than this iris, and that has to do with the angle of the eye. Because remember, the eye is a circle that's sitting in perspective on another circle, which is the eyeball. So the angle is often, you know, askew. So on this one, if it's much front and center, it's going to be slightly bigger than this one. So those are things to really look at. But there are times when you're doing a painting and you might just make it bigger. 
uh, and that's okay because uh, you're the boss, you're not a photographer. So if you want to, you know, even up the size of the two irises, even though it's not in your reference, so be it, no problem. Okay, so that's cool. So you see how we really accentuated that. And let's darken this area again, because once we darken one area, everything else kind of darkens around it, actually lightens up, and then you got to catch it up, right? And then we'll just catch this up, just like so. And we're just deepening her, uh, deepening her, her, uh, her form. And if anyone has watched my live streams from beginning to end, you know I'm never any in, I'm never in a rush, right? The only thing I'm worried about is beauty. So beauty in painting. You know, speed does not mean a darn thing. Uh, you just want to do it right and just take your time and. Hey, Mr. Ed Todd, always a pleasure to see you. How are you, my friend? That's so cool. So glad you're here. Great. So as you can see, we're kind of building everything up. So I'm very happy with it thus far. Now, what I'm going to do is, so we went ahead and darkened everything here. So let's go ahead with that detail mixture. So now I have the straight detail mixture. I darkened the face, starting with the center line, then moved out. Maybe I can darken this shadow a little bit. So I'm going to be paying attention to the Zygomaticus uh, Major and the Zygomaticus Minor. These muscles that are coming down here and attaching to the Apicularis Oris, right at the corner of the mouth. They're not actually attaching to the muscle, they're attaching to, I believe, the maxilla. Okay, so I see how I'm darkening this up just a bit. And of course we have a transition tone here. So I'll increase my distance, almost double, to get a lighter spray. So here we're about three. Now I'm six, and now I can get that lighter value right next to it. Like I said, let's make the airbrush do the hard work. You don't have to do the hard work in worrying about get the value. You know, how am I going to pull back the trigger further, all that. Nope. Just use the inverse square law and just increase your distance and decrease your distance to get lighter and darker. That simple. And that complex at the same time. Airbrush is a very scientific machine, and once you know the science, everything sort of kind of falls into place, and that's what I want for you all, you know, to, to get that kind of scientific precision and that workability, which is great, and so, so cool. Uh, Dwayne says uh, that he used golden as an underpainting and then detailed over with illustration. Very cool. Wow, that's a great idea, definitely. So now you can see um, I darkened some of these values here because once you darken these areas, the adjacent areas start to lighten. I still have some pencil lines that have to go, but it's wet, so I'm going to chill. And once the pencil lines are away, then we'll be able to see some of these values a little better. Like the pencil line on the upper lip there. I'm just going to get ready to get rid of them. So now you see we're in a good position, right? We really are. We're in a good position. Let me darken this area right here. Mr. Todd, wow, thank you. <laughs> Todd, thank you so much for the $19.99, uh, $19.99 Super Chat. Uh, that is amazing. With that, I really appreciate that, sir. That is incredible. Thank you so much. You know, 
you guys supporting the channel is so important because it enables me to continue and every little bit really is a lot because not only is it helping the channel and helping pay the bills to keep this going but also uh, it gives me the encouragement to really push it and and uh, so thank you so much Mr. Todd I really appreciate it you guys are incredible we're nearing like the record of the uh, the super stickers <laughs> so that is so great thank you for that uh, it's uninspected unexpected and just really appreciated just really really appreciated so now what we're going to do is we're going to put on some of those freehand shields because I want to start working on the hair in the hands and uh, oh that's okay uh, 1999 is very generous thank you Todd uh, I don't want to have any overspray on the face we worked very hard especially in the beginning when we went ahead with the white mixture for the second time right so uh, let's see so what I'm going to do is I want to cover her face and I think this might work. Let's see. So it's funny. Uh, I think it was on Monday. I started the day uh, helping somebody with website design. And then, uh, no, it was on Tuesday, website design. And then I was doing airbrush with another student in the afternoon. And then in the evening <laughs> I was uh, in the early evening I was uh, doing oil paint and then at the end of the day I was doing website design again so it's amazing you know doing this as a full-time job it really it really is so interesting and the most important thing is the people you know getting to speak with great people and talk about art and really help the students uh, really create art and and a website and everything that just makes them proud so if anyone is ever interested in a website I do do that and it's at an incredibly low price I mean it's ridiculously low but I do that because I'm also an artist who didn't know how to do web design at one time so if you're interested let me know I'm currently working on three websites just I'm tweaking two. those websites are up and looking amazing and I have a new website that I'm working on for an artist on Friday so that's really cool honey thank you so much for hanging out you have a great night don't work too hard and I hope you have an amazing weekend a fun weekend safe weekend happy weekend so that is great so I'm covering up her face and um, I want to make sure I have this correct because if I don't it's not good and so one thing is with this uh, customized shield I have the irises um, cover uh, open so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray those irises once again not the irises but the pupils might as well right you know why we're here let's go for it and so now what I want to do is I want to put some magnets close to the edge here people say I sometimes live close to the edge um, so right here we go oh let's put those magnets straight close right and we have a low PSI I'm at 25 and I kind of bring it down so I could go ahead and start working on her hair without worrying about overspraying on her face. So just bringing this down. And so we're going to work on this side and then after we're done we're going to work on the other side. Uh, but we want to get to her hair looking pretty good at first. And then right here I have some really nice uh, pencil lines in my line drawing that's going to help me. And let's go ahead and get some of them. 
Make sure we put the magnets close to the edge because underspray is not our friend. Definitely isn't my friend. One thing I like about the badger, I just rubbed the needle accidentally on the paper and the needle wasn't damaged. So the needle is pretty robust with the badgers. Uh, is it more robust than others? I don't know. But my own, I think the badgers are a little more robust. That's only my own kind of travel. But the good thing is, is that with the Iwatas, they, they have beautifully machined needles, right? They're really beautiful. The way the machinery is on them is just really nice to see. See that? I'm talking great about every company, right? Who am I? No, I mean, it's really important to, you know, with the airbrush world, the companies that are kind of making products for us, we have to support them. Even though we don't 100% agree with everything, we still have to support them because they're supporting us in one way or another. So that's pretty important, I think. Uh, so that's why I, I'm trying to be supportive of all the companies that are, you know, working to give us really great products to make our jobs easier, right? So like Coast Airbrush and everything. You know, I'm keeping my, you know, hat off to them because they're kind of carrying that airbrush torch, you know. So, so I'm going to say great things about them and say check them out, you know, because we need to keep them going, right? We really do. Keep the, keep the, like Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're for us, right? So that's how you have to look at it. So we might not agree with every company, but they're not against us, they're for us. So that's how I look at it. Of course I have my favorites, right? Everyone has their favorites. Okay, so now we worked on, let me see down here where her, there's a nice dark right here. goes right up to her ring wow we're at 1106 how about that this night is going fast I didn't have to use the bathroom once I didn't have to make tea so that's good this was a great evening thus far thank you everybody so I always give you the full two hours I'm just going to darken right around this hand here, her beautiful hand. I am going to clean my, straighten out, not clean, but straighten out my studio. It's getting overwhelming. Now I'm painting in oils, um, painting an airbrush and pastel all at the same easel. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, so I think this weekend I'm going to be doing some serious, serious organizing. So next live stream, you might see something different if I didn't procrastinate it away. Uh, so this is cool. So right now we have the uh, palm of her hand. So I'm going to move these away because they're in the way. So remember, you want to cover what you don't want to spray. So whenever you're doing this, as long as you keep that, you know, cover what you don't want to spray, and this way you'll be spraying where you want to have it. So, so right now I'm just going to accentuate this heel here of her hand. Is that what it's called, the heel or the side of the hand? I know it's a muscle, so... I know about the bones of the hand, but I do have some work to do when it comes to the muscles of the hand. There aren't many muscles of the hand, but those I need to know. So 
I'm very hard on myself, more than I am on my students, you know. Oh, cool. So Dwayne says he uses Badger, Iwata, Harder, and Steenbeck, and Pache. They all have their good and bad points, and Coast Airbrush is the best. Yeah, I have to say, you know, how they keep everyone encouraged about airbrushing is really good. They really do. Their live streams really get everyone pumped up. And that's nice to see and unified, right? So I definitely see that. So you definitely want to give them kudos for carrying that torch. No other, no other store does anything close to Coast. Hey, that rhymes. They should, you, you should tell them that if anyone talks to Coast, that no one comes close to coast. That could be a really good catchphrase for them. No one comes close to coast. And they can say, thanks, Tim. There we go. So you see how I'm working on this. So a lot of times the adjacent shape describes the shape more than the shape itself, right? So that's uh, very much a case in point right here. And you can see we're kind of working on this hand, but we don't want to go too far ahead, right? So let's move on over to the other side and see if we can make that happen. And yeah, they all have their, their pluses and minuses, right? I definitely agree. Uh, some are really amazing in other respects and then other respects, you know, like the way that, you know, Iwata's just are so elegant, the way they're packaged and come out of the box just ready to rock, you know, you got to give them that, you know, and just the way they're built and their quality assurance is out of this world, so definitely... And then you have Badger for their versatility and their interchangeability and just their, uh, you know, durability, right? So I love Badger for that. And then, you know, you can, Badger has, you know, some really nice uh, precision airbrushes. So that's great. And they're made in the USA, Pache. I haven't tried a Pache yet, but I am interested in trying that Talon. You know, I heard good things about the Talon. So has anyone tried the Talon out there? And I'd love to hear your your thoughts. It just looks cool. I like eagles, you know? Uh, so that's interesting. Oh, so here's a good way to use that freehand shield to get this super edge here. Perpendicular, not parallel. This way you're in control with how much. So see how I can get that edge of her hair there. And so with blonde hair, platinum blonde hair with her, you want to make sure that you let the white blonde hair obscure details. You don't want to go crazy with details where the white hair is hitting the light. You want to let that kind of blow out a little bit. And that's going to give you the real impression of somebody with platinum blonde hair, right? Um, so Dwayne says they are where I get all my supplies. Just received a set of illustration bloodline colors. Very cool. And you're in California, which is great. You probably get it like one, two, three, right, sir? So that's cool. So what do you think of the bloodline, right? Is that Tim Gore? Is that the line? What do you think of them? Uh, do you feel, do you use them for, let's say, uh, horror genre, or do you use them for regular jobs, Dwayne? So really appreciate your insight. Everyone does. So thank you for your insight in advance. So like I said, you you want to hit those those details, those darks, but you want to let it blow out where that blonde hair is hitting that light and oh cool so Dwayne says he really digs the talon very cool yes I definitely have to try one uh, really great brush now great in far as the way it looks so I don't know
but I'm definitely, you know, if Dwayne says it's good, that's a that's a really good for them. So I trust I trust uh, Dwayne's opinion and his experience. So you see here, I want to make sure that I let the blonde hair blow out over here. So we have to be very careful we don't overdo. Wow, that's the second time today I let the needle hit the paper. I'm having depth perception issues today. So that is really weird. Uh, never had that happen in a very long time. So. Has been a long day. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and let's use our free hand, uh, Blackbeard Wheat, your friend and mine. Let's spray through it and see how we can get some really nice organic spray patterns when we're working. So, so that's pretty cool. So that really it helps a lot. Uh, maybe I need to uh, wipe off my my glasses because that might be the issue so if I have dirty glasses then I'm not seeing things correctly so definitely I'm gonna clean off this here clean these off so I see much better so two days regular jobs I do more fantasy so the off colors are very appealing. Wow, that's very cool. So with the uh, uh, with the off colors, uh, it really does uh, really good to Tim Gore, huh? And so that's good to hear. So it's nice to get, and I think that's one of the reasons why I like Createx is that they're really listening to you know what custom painters like uh, Mr. Dwayne uh, really need. So. Really nice. Okay, so now I, oh my God, I can see. Look at this. I was like looking through like, uh, you know, a steamy uh, glass window. So now all of a sudden I'm seeing like, what am I painting? No, it's like, <laughs> it looks much, I feel I can see much better. Oh boy. So this is coming out to plan, right? That's how I look at it. It's coming out to plan. What's really interesting, since I'm here and I'm working on the hair, so it's a good opportunity to let things dry. I'm going to put some of the magnets close to the edge here. And I'm going to hit the dark of her sweater collar right here. So I'm just going to do a little perpendicular and not parallel and get this really dark edge. Right here, it's much darker. Make sure you get those magnets really close to the edge now if i want like right at the edge then you do parallel right there but usually it's perpendicular not parallel so i'm going to put a freehand shield right here here's a trick sometimes this is some things i started doing lately is i may put a freehand shield here and i don't have to hold it what i can do is just put a magnet there and then I can just freely spray there and get that edge, which is really nice. And when you have it pressed on there like that, it's a much harder edge. So wipe it off when you lift it up and put it back on. Very important. Put this here. Then we'll take our magnet, pow, put it right there. And now we're just perpendicular and not parallel it. And now we have that really nice hard edge right there. So very, very good. And so while we're here, right, let's look on the other side of her, her mandible here or jawline. And right here, I can definitely go darker. But what I can do is I can use my freehand shield as a kind of like a stencil, right? I can put this right here. Let me move this out of the way and hit it with a magnet so it doesn't move. So anything that works is important. You know, the ends justify the means. Unless you're doing something like 
totally ridiculous, but something like this, this is good. So you don't want to go all the way down. You just want to crawl along the surface. I'm going to put that there. And now I'm just going to spray this corner. Bring that right down. And now we lift that up. And now we have a beautiful dark right there. There's a nice beautiful dark. And so now we have the dark on the other side of the uh, turtleneck. Wipe off your freehand shield. You never want to reposition paint, okay? That's a very important thing to remember. Uh, don't make the mistakes I made. Okay, so we'll put this here. And you just, you know, find this just like that. So if anyone wants the, uh, the uh, file for this, just email me, paintingcliffs at gmail.com, and I'll send you the file, okay? So that would be pretty cool. And then I want to cover this up, so I'll just put this here. And put this over here. And now I'm just going to spray down. Watch this. I have both areas covered. So I'm making... making these freehand shield and these magnets work for us, right? Watch this. Papow, right? That's really great. So now you're starting to see her sweater, the hair, kind of working in the corner. Those are things that we're really just mapping things out and bringing things together. And let's see. So, so Dwayne says he was gifted a talent set for Christmas and started using it over your eclipses. Wow! Now that's interesting. So uh, what is the, what's your favorite uh, aspect of the talon? Just as, uh, you know, just your own thoughts. What is the favorite thing about the talon? So that is so cool. Such a cool idea for an airbrush too. So I'm going to put this right here. Magnets. Magnets are so important on a metal panel. They just make life a lot more fun. And again, remember, we can use this right here with a magnet to help us. And now we can kind of bring this down. Perpendicular and not parallel. Okay, great. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So now we have some really nice hard edges. And if we go ahead and lift up, we can see like now, sort of like we're playing hardball, right? We're starting to see some development. And so that's really cool. So I'm going to lift this up just for a second, just to see where we are. When we come back, we're going to start working with the light mixture. And that's a jump up. For, uh, so let's lift this up and you can see so it looks like not much is happening but I assure you things are happening uh, as we are developing this other things start to fall into place but one of the important things I felt we did today was to come in with the with the white mixture again and really accentuate some of those lights to bring that nose forward and to bring this area forward and the super orbital eminence that's what it is guys so right above the uh eye sockets is the super orbital eminence those are two kind of bulbous uh bony structure that on this on the forehead that comes forward and that gets more light so that's what i was doing there that was on the tip of my tongue for two hours how about that Okay, so now we have this, 
and I'm pretty happy. And we're going to develop this area, but remember we were going to work on the hands on this side. So let's put this on here. Again, we don't want to, we definitely don't want to have any overspray on the face, which we worked so hard on. So we'll just go ahead and cover this and put this on there, which is going to be great. Brad says, thanks for another great feed, Tim, looking great. Good night, all. Thank you for the super chat, Mr. Brad. I really appreciate the $20 super chat. That's amazing. Uh, one real cool thing, the average view duration for the live stream tonight is 25 minutes. We have 52 views which is just amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, oh, so Dwayne says for the towel in the big cup, it's light and it's very smooth. And at 100 bucks for the 0 0.23, 0 0.38, and 0 0.66 setups and the fan cap, you're getting at least one more soon. Very cool, Dwayne. So thank you for that insight. That is great. So that's coming from somebody who has a lot of experience and is a very good airbrush artist, so very cool. Thank you, sir. So now we're going to work on her hand, and uh, I think we don't need a freehand shield. I think we could freehand this, so let's do that together. So there's a nice uh, shadow under here, and we just, the main thing is we wanna cover her face so we don't have overspray there. And this is her thumb here, so we want to start making this thumb round. I know it's hard to see it because it's closer to the light, but perhaps I can go ahead and zoom into it uh, for the last four minutes of today's live stream. There we go, perfect. And so you see, I'm just going to start developing this. Again, pumping the trigger, 25 PSI. And right now I'm with the detail mixture. So I'm getting the value but working on texture as I go, which is a great way to do it. Now, the way that this tendon comes in here, uh, so I have a trick. What I do is I take a, a stump that has graphite on it. And so you don't want to uh, make the first move. So here I can take the stump with graphite and I could just kind of see how it looks. So let's say I did that and I'm like, oh, that looks terrible, Tim. The stump in graphite, look at that. It's as if it wasn't there and it hardly needs to worry about it. But when it does work, you can take the stump with graphite, lightly go over here like this, and now you can just spray that very lightly with your detail mixture. And that's what you want. You want to, you don't want to commit yourself always. You want, hey, Mr. Clutch, Patrick, great to see you. How are you, sir? And uh, so uh, Clutch is one of my students, just a great artist doing some amazing stuff over there. And he's out of Massachusetts. So second Massachusetts person tonight on the live stream. And what we're going to do we're going to do the same thing. Let's move up here a little bit and we'll work on just defining a little bit with this stump, paper stump, and it has some uh, graphite on it. So what a great way to see if it works before you come in with the ink. The ink's a little more permanent, but with this stump, it's uh, you have a lot of wiggle room. If you make a mistake, you just erase it as if it never happened. Just like so. So you got these tendons coming down. You have this tendon right here. We can pull that down. And so we can definitely work on that with the graphite and the eraser first. And then once we say, hey, that works, then we come in and reinforce that 
with the airbrush, and I think that's really cool, you know? So the greatest defense is not to be there, so any kind of faux pas, you're going to be ahead of the game, right? That's what we want. We want to be ahead of that game. And, oh, thank you. So uh, Mr. Patrick says he loves this image. That's uh, fantastic. And thank you so much, Dwayne. I appreciate that. He says uh, another great live stream. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. I really appreciate it. I have so much fun doing these, you know. So again, we have these little wrinkles. So why go ahead and commit with the airbrush when I can see how it looks with this stump here? And uh, so if I zoom out, we can see how I'm developing this hand over here. You can't really see it because everything's so light, but that's kind of the nature of this particular image. So, but we can go ahead and darken the negative space between the hair and the hand. So let's do that. That's a nice dark, dark area. There we go. So now we see that negative space there. We want to get the negative space between the hand, the hair, and her sweater. Just a little bit of her sweater sleeve is showing. So pretty much that's, that's basically how it's looking. Let's go ahead and lift all of the freehand shields off here and see what we have thus far. There we go. And this is what we have so far. Not too bad. So everything's going to plan. Not perfect. But that's the whole thing. It's like you, you've done is better than perfect. You take your time and do the best job you can. So great to see everybody. Great to see you, uh, Patrick. And thank you. Thank you so much, Dwayne, for the amazing Super Chat sticker. Thank you so much, Dave, for the really, really out of this world Super Chat sticker. Thank you, Brad. And Dwayne, I did mention. Mr. Todd, thank you so much for the Super Chat sticker. You guys are just amazing. Uh, thank you, uh, Michael, uh, for that. I mean, this has been like a record-setting day for Super Chats. And I really appreciate you guys. Thank you, Dwayne, for all your amazing insights on this. Uh, thank you for all your comments and hanging out with little old me on a Wednesday. Next week, part four. And we're going to just uh, really develop her. We might come back in again, no promises, with the white mixture and go even further. Now that I'm working in oil paints, I really want a rich, opaque feeling to this. Even though I'm working in, even though I'm working in transparent inks, I'm after a more opaque look lately. So guys, have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging out. I hope to see everyone next week. And you all are the best. I'm humbled by your time and uh, your generosity and all your great positivity. I'm going to take that with me all week. Bye, guys. Take care of yourselves.